Let's start this video by taking a look at the device that I'm about to take apart. Notice as I rotate at the little red LEDs light, they're triggered by micro switches, which you may be able to hear in the background. Now I swing it and it's one of these chaos type pendulums, but with a kicker in the middle. However, unlike the Wildwood, which came earlier, this one I think has much simpler circuitry. We'll find out in due course because uh, I'm about to take it to bits so we can see what's inside. But this is more or less what it does loud clacking noises as, as it hits the plastic support. Anyway, let's take it apart. This is another item that I bought while I was in America, sometime uh, after the Wildwood one was bought. But it uses a very similar principle. It's probably bought from the same type of gadget shop. It's got the magnet up here supporting the shaft because it's important with these pendulum effects that it is a rigid shaft. You can't just dangle it from a bit of string because otherwise it just, if it was in string, it would just kick with the magnet sideways. It wouldn't actually sort of swing as such. It would just try and get away from the magnet. I have tested this in the past. In this case, the device, the pendulum itself has its magnet and it's also got a long off switch and inside here it are micro switches I can hear the micro switches I don't really know much else about what's inside but I'll we'll find out in due course I would guess that if I take this off that uh, it looks like the let me find a screwdriver that actually fits it looks like the magnet itself might be on the battery compartment and it makes sense to put the batteries in the middle for balance yeah, a couple of thin batteries in here. Well, to tell you what, while we're here, let's pop it all the way open. The screws are the same size, that's nice. And what are we going to see in here? Spudger. There is a circuit board. Uh, and some resistors for the LEDs. Okay, that, I wasn't expecting the circuit board. Uh, let me zoom down in this. No need for a picture, it's very simple. We've got one resistor coming from the uh, the switch here. Quite a high volume resistor, is that not, not? Is it 470 ohm? It is, it's 470 ohm, yellow, violet, brown. Okay, uh, that is quite high, given that this is just 3 volts in the first place. Um, and then the two little micro switches, uh, not micro switches, read switches, that when you hold a magnet next to them, well, I actually, yes, I can hold the magnet at it. When you hold the magnet next to them, Nothing happens. Well, it helps if you switch it on, doesn't it? Oh, actually, the these ones, this switch is switching the LEDs at the other side, and this one's switching the LEDs at that side. That's weird, but look how dim they are. Anyway, um, let's go on to the main unit now. I'll zoom out for this. How much of that was out of shot? I don't know. Uh, that's the problem of me zooming in too much. My apologies if it was out of shot. I could just put it back together and pretend I'd never taken it apart before and start again, but that just doesn't carry the same magic of a complete... the surprise element for me of when I take this apart and it's something interesting inside. It's not something interesting inside. Not unless there's some amazing circuit board in here. There's the coil. There's some hot melt glue. Let's get the hot melt glue off. Let's put some isopropanol on it. That usually has the desired effect of instantly releasing it. And then we'll just uh, apply a bit of pressure with uh, this. And off comes the hot melt glue. And it's just a single transistor. It's the classic circuit. Okay, I shall reverse engineer this. Um, and we can take a look at the circuitry. I'll draw that down. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. It is very, very simple. Just a single transistor. It's marked 9014 and it's even marked emitter, base and collector. And this very stylish coil. Looks very good. Looks very bold, the text and the whole coil thing. It looks quite smart. Um, the positive lead from the battery comes on to the collector of the transistor. The negative goes to one end of a tapped winding. Now, notice there are two wires coming off this. That's just because they appear to have folded the wire over just to make it easier to solder, and they've done that elsewhere. It winds round on the centre of the core for X number of turns, and then it comes out and it goes to the um, emitter of the transistor. So they've brought the two wires, they've brought a loop of it out and wrapped it around that, taken it back on, 
and then they've wound up this thick coil. That is a huge distance. I mean, the resistance of that is 2.45 thousand ohms. So that is a huge distance, like hundreds of meters of wire. And then when it comes back out to the, um, the base of the transistor, it's actually got three wires coming out. And you initially I thought, why is that? Is that just because they fattened up the wire? And it is. They've got the thin winding here. It's so thin you probably can't see it. And they've just laced it backwards and forwards a few times to the last, say, inch and a half or about 40 millimetres. And then they've uh, used that reinforced triple wire to go onto the connector, onto the, the base. So let me show you the schematic. I think I've shown you everything I need to show in that picture. I shall zoom down in this. I shall do that right now. It is zoomed. So here is the principal operation. Ignore this here. That's how they've actually laced the wire. And I'll, I'll show you that afterwards. It's 40 AWG, 0.08 millimeters diameter, and tons of it to create these high resistance windings. So there's the PV3 battery, and it provides 9 volt to the collector. Now, normally, a uh, NPN transistor would have its emitter connected to the zero volt rail um, and its base would be taken positive with respect to that. But because they've got effectively a feedback winding between the emitter and the base, it doesn't matter where it is in the circuit, although in this case it's, it's positioned for being able to drive this part of the winding. So the winding itself is this bit here. It starts from the negative and they've folded the wire over and uh, connected to the negative wire. And then they've uh, taken the wire in and wound it around the centre of the core. Then they've brought a loop out to the emitter and taken it back in. And then they've wound this thick 2.45 thousand ohm uh, winding. And then they've done that sort of zigzag backwards and forwards just to thicken the wire up so they can basically twist it and solder it around the transistor pin, the base, better. So here's what happens when it's powered. The power is applied, no current flows. The magnet swings by. If the magnet's direction is swinging, that it induces current in this, that this end goes positive with respect to that, the transistor starts turning on. When it does that, it, it effectively energizes. It connects this tap in the winding up to the positive, and that doesn't just give it a magnetic kick, but it also uh, drives current through this winding magnetically. It, it couples onto it, and that gives it more of a positive. So it, Initially, just the slightest hint of that transistor being turned on will actually induce the current and it will just give it a solid turn on. Um, it has to be able to continuously change the, uh, the magnetic field in that to be able to keep that feedback going back into the transistor. So when the coil saturates, it will uh, effectively then the feedback to the transistor will start going lower. And then when that happens, it turns off the drive to that and it causes the avalanche effect that it turns off. So as the magnet swings back, it's just giving it a thump as it passes. I wonder if it does multiple thumps, though. It, I've never really checked that out. I've heard some of these ornaments make a sort of noise as, as if it is doing a multiple strike, which is quite reasonable enough. It could do that. That's possibly the difference between that very sophisticated circuitry in the last one of these I looked at, which was the Wildwood Pendulum, where it had circuitry that was designed to just give it a single tap uh, as it went past. And I think, if anything, the Wildwood's going to have much more efficient circuitry in this. I think this one may have a slightly higher current draw if it does do multiple pulses as the thing is passing. And I will say that when the pendulum is passing, uh, it was occasionally kicking the, it was so enthusiastic, it was actually kicking the little support and making loud clack noise every so often. The random bouncing about is simply, they've got five magnets in here so that the magnet on this has to find its way in between those. I mean, it, even without any circuitry inside it, if I put this uh, support back in and I zoom back out again, if I plug this back in and I stick this on and give it a swing, you'll see that it will do that thing, that it will bounce and it'll be keep its momentum, but it will just bounce around those magnets. Um, and you get executive toys that just do that. This is all they do. They, they don't keep going. But with this one, uh, it's got this extra boost coil that will keep that bouncing. But there we have it. Uh, it's a device. It's called The Visitor. Um, 
And it's it's a simpler version of that style of circuitry. It's the mass-produced version versus the wildwood, uh, but still very interesting, and it's nicely constructed, even though it is just using a standard component used out of many of these kinetic ornaments. Very neat, very simple.